Yeah, welcome to this talk. This is going to be an introduction to CF Engine Build. Uh, I am Ola Herman, and this is Lars. Uh, yeah, you can go on. So this is what we will cover today: a little bit of background, um, history, and how it works. A look at the the website, the command line tool, uh, some examples. We'll do some demos. We will talk a little bit about writing modules and a little bit about how people can contribute. Yeah. Starting with the background, uh, CF Engine Build, from our uh, perspective as a company, it was uh, made for three reasons. We want to make an easier getting started experience where you can do more from the get-go with CF Engine. You can uh, grab a module and achieve something useful without writing a lot of code. Uh, another reason for it is to ease the upgrade process. Um, it's quite common to have your own fork of, of our policy and managing your own patches to, to our policy and then that makes upgrading difficult because you have to rebase your patches and uh, resolve conflicts and so on. Uh, and finally, we want to have a place where users can find more examples or more um, ready-to-use things and share those things with each other. So, small history lesson. About 10 years ago, we had this uh, thing called the Sign Center in beta. And that was the same uh, concept, the same idea. It is a good idea, but that implementation was uh, very limited and uh, we uh, abandoned it and worked on other things in the meantime. And now we are back and uh, making it a reality, so to say. Um, Design Center did not have a website, but it had some tooling, it had some UI in the enterprise version, and it had these kinds of modules or sketches, as they were called. Um, it also has a lot to do with what the state of CF Engine was at that time. Uh, when the Sign Center was made, um, it was actually the thing bringing in Git integration, so there was no Git integration before that. And um, JSON support was limited, uh, limited options for separating your data from your policy, um, and also very limited the things that you can put in modules. So now we have custom promise types, we have importable compliance reports, we have a lot more configuration that you can do from uh, augments from the JSON file. So there's just a lot more things that we can put in modules now. Okay, so how does it work? This is the general workflow if you're working with a CF Engine build. So you uh, you go to the website, you look around, you find modules that you are interested in, then you add those modules to your policy set or to your uh, project, as we call it. Then you build your project into a policy set, you deploy that policy set to your hub, and then you observe the results. Um, so whether that's through the terminal or the enterprise web UI is kind of uh, the same but this is from our documentation, so it has the web UI. A little bit of terminology here. Um, we call these things uh, projects, which is basically just a folder or a repo where you have your cfps.json file. Um, and it consists of multiple modules that you've added. And you build that project into a policy set, which is the thing that you deploy. Um, yeah, finally here, the policy set is backwards compatible in the sense that what ends up on your hosts and what ends up on your hub is the same thing as before. It's var CF engine master files and it's policy just like before. It's just the build process that is, that is changed here or deploying. Yeah, go on. So this is what it looks like. You have your project up here. It can have modules from us, like uh, the default policy. It can have a module from Nick back there. It can have a module from me. And then you run the build. All of that goes into one policy set. 
here it's a tarball. You deploy that policy set to your hub, and it ends up in varcf engine master files, which hopefully you're familiar with. Another setup that you can have is that you have your project here, you're manipulating your project, then you push it to Git uh, Hub or GitLab or some Git server, and then you can have your hub Git pull, and your hub can actually do the build and again deploy it to varcf engine master files. Even uh, in enterprise, you can do all of this on the hub directly through the GUI. Or if you want to, you can also log into the terminal there and, and do everything there. But it's kind of designed in the sense that you can do the work here on one machine, push it somewhere, and it gets pulled uh, to the hub. Yeah, if you're editing the project in Mission Portal, our enterprise GUI, it looks like this. We're not gonna demo it today, but this is what it looks like. And um, a little bit of background on the technology. There is a command line client, it's called CFBS. Um, it's written in Python, just like our other tool, CF Remote. The website is entirely open source. It's built on Hugo and standard CSS JavaScript stuff. And we are using some uh, GitHub Actions for um, doing the work when somebody submits a module and we want to um, store that, snapshot that as a zip, and we put that in uh, S3 for later. So if somebody unpublishes their repo or whatever, it's still there. It's still um, in our control in a way. Go on. Yeah. So uh, in general, there's two JSON files hosted on GitHub that people can make pull requests to if they want to submit a module. And one of them is uh, actually generated by that GitHub action, so you don't need to edit it. It's just a list of all the versions for all the modules. But the main one is the index, and there it has a list of all the modules um, that we show on the website. You can also have modules outside of that index that um, come from the sources where you set it up, like a URL. Uh, yeah, like I said, the zip folders, they're stored in AWS S3, so that versions JSON file, it has the links to those um, S3 zip files. Okay. And a basic idea here is that your builds should be reproducible. So if you have a repo, you have a CF Engine build project and you build it on your machine, and it works, and you test it on your machine. Um, we want it to be the case that that you run the same build with the same repo on the hub, and you get the same result. That way, you don't really have to transfer the the tarball, like we saw in that example. the The hub itself can generate that tarball or generate the policy set. Okay. So looking at the cfps.json file, it has a few things. Um, metadata, configuration for the command line client, and it has modules. So those are the modules that you will uh, be building into your policy set. And um, when the CFBS command line starts, it looks for this file in the current working directory. It looks for cfps.json. Similar to how packages.json or, or other systems handle this. Here's an example. Um, uh, text is uh, maybe a bit small, but we can zoom in in the next slide. So there's example project up top, and then there's the main part here is the build part, which tells you which modules will be used to build um, the project. So yeah, you can zoom in on one of them. And this is the uninstall talk module in my project. Um, there's some metadata about what it is, where it came from, then there is a version number, a commit SHA, and then there's the steps for how this is built. Um, so this is a super simplistic command uh, syntax that we made where you can do some very uh, simple commands like copy a file from here in the project to there in the, the policy set. 
And these ones are new. They say, uh, I want this bundle added to my bundle sequence, and I want these policy files added to my inputs. So the combination of those three things for a policy file means that A, it will be in the policy set, B, it will be loaded by the agent because it's in the inputs, and C, the bundle will be run as part of the sequence. Okay, let's take a look at the website. Yeah, so here is the website. Uh, you can see there is a getting started guide that goes to our documentation. If we scroll down, you can see there's a section for featured modules. So we just pick and rotate a bit which ones we show here. There's also popular modules um, sorted by download numbers. So unsurprisingly, master files is first there. That's the default policy. Um, then we can search for something. So maybe search for talk. So there we found that uninstall talk module. You can click on it. And um, it has some readme, some explanation of what this module does. Here you see an example. If you have this in your policy set, you install talk, run the agent, it removes talk. Quite simple. Um, if you go up, we can click on the repository there. And here we find how this module was implemented and we can actually open up the CF file. And that's, that's the CF engine policy for this module. And that's kind of uh, it in terms of making a module. It's very simple. It's a readme file, a uh, whatever you're making, like a CF engine file or a Python file or something else. And then you need that JSON entry in the index to get it published on the website. Okay, um, I think we can go back to the slide deck. Yeah, so we went through this. I have the cheating slides just in case things go wrong. You can keep going. Yeah, there's a module page, there's description. Yeah, okay. So now looking at the command line tool, uh, this tool allows you to create projects, build projects, uh, search for modules, um, and yeah, edit your project in, in different ways. Um, as I said before, running CFBS build is what you do to uh, convert a project into a policy set. And then the policy set is what you deploy. We talked about this a bit. Uh, there's different ways of deploying. For, um, for a community, you have these three uh, options, uh, I'd say. So you can deploy it locally. You do that with CFBS install. Uh, you can deploy it remotely by typing CF remote deploy, or you can set up your policy server to pull uh, with Git. And then for enterprise, there is also the GUI. Uh, move on. Yeah, so yeah, we can mention them and then go to the demo uh, soon. So init creates a project, add, adds a module, build, builds a project, install, installs a policy set locally. Uh, similarly, here are the commands that we mentioned before for deploying it. You can do build and install, build and deploy, uh, git push if you're using git or use the GUI. That's the same as mentioned. No, no. You push the, the project, so the um, JSON file and anything else you have in that uh, repo. We'll, we'll look at it, I think. Um, yeah, let's take a look at some examples. Uh, so you have some things that are mainly uh, libraries that don't do much on their own, but they're available for, for other things. So master files is um, generally your first module. Everyone adds uh, master files by default if you, if you don't say no to it. Um, then you have from Surfsara, uh, their CF Engine library is available on build. And they have some cool things around services and templates. 
Um, we have a library for SSHD config, and then we have many other modules which use that library for SSHD config to actually make changes to that file. Um, then you can have modules for enforcing security requirements. We have many of those. So you can just search for uninstall telnet server. You find a module that will uninstall telnet everywhere for you. Um, in many of those cases, like the uninstall uh, modules, uh, we support adding exceptions. So you can use the um, uninstall Apache module, but then specify the one web server where you actually want it, and that will work. Uh, SSH protocol 2 is for uh, for the SSHD config again, so that will set the protocol to version 2. Uh, delete files is a module which takes input, which means that you can specify parameters from the command line, in this case, files that you want to be deleted. So if that's some malicious files, you can do that. Similar, we have file permissions. You can specify a list of files and their permissions, and it will enforce the permissions on those files. Finally, we have uninstall packages, which is similar to uninstall telnet server, all of those other ones, but this one works with input, so it allows you to specify a list of packages to uninstall. Yeah, we've done a couple of CVE-related modules. Um, the first one here was a CVE in sudo, where you basically need to upgrade sudo, so that's what the module does. The next one was log4j, and that one is looking for vulnerable installation of the log4j library for this log4shell uh, vulnerability. Yeah. Then you have other modules that basically just change a setting or enable a feature in CF Engine. Uh, every minute changes your agent to report and to run every minute instead of every five minutes. Client-initiated reporting uh, switches the reporting around so that it's the, the agent contacting the hub to do reporting. Uh, and then we have promise types. Ratislav was showing earlier. Uh, we have promise types for HTTP, Git, systemd. And this means that if you're writing policy and you want to manage a git repo, you want to clone a git repo or check out different branches, you can use this one. Uh, if you want to manage systemd services, that one does it for you nicely. If you want to make HTTP requests, the HTTP promise type does that. Yeah, you can also have modules which give you reports. So that's mainly for enterprise, but we have a few uh, reports where you add the module and uh, you get the report in Mission Portal. There is one for Linus, which shows you a lot of um, security checks, security hardening checks, and where they are uh, failing, like where they are no, non-compliant in your infrastructure. Similarly, we have one for supported uh, OS, which tells you that you have so-and-so many Ubuntu 12 machines or something that's not supported anymore. More modules. Um, inventory modules, they add reporting data, so they define variables in the agent, and um, that can be OpenSSL versions that it found, uh, people who have pseudo access, unshadowed users in Etsy password, last log information of when somebody logged in last, uh, or information from Etsy host. And those are variables, you can print them on the command line or, or print them out to files, and in Enterprise you can obviously see them in the GUI. So, let's do some demos. Let's start with creating a project and adding a module. So we're going to run CFBS init. This is basically an empty folder here. It's going to ask us for... Uh, project name, yeah, okay, description, 
And then in general, it will help you with a lot of these configuration things, but it's always an option to just press enter for the default. So here, uh, yes, we want git, so you can just press enter. And it's finding my git commit username, that's fine. That's also fine, my email address. And uh, that's the commit message, so that looks good. Now it made a commit, it initialized that project. Do you wish to use the default policy set? Uh, yeah, that's good. And commit message again, okay. So now we have a project. Uh, you can cat the cfbs.json perhaps, or, or show it there, that's fine. So that's how it looks like. Similar to before, we only have one module, um, but let's add another one. So you can do cfps add, uh, uninstall talk or uninstall telnet server, uh, add, okay, you can search. Yeah, so it found that one module going to copy paste that, cfps add, okay, here we see this one had a dependency, so we added two modules now, if you go back to the cfps.json, now we have three modules, and um, yeah, so now you can build this, So that's going to go through the, all the steps in the JSON. You see there's two steps for master files. Run a script, copy all of the contents. Autorun has one, um, one step for putting some JSON configuration. And then uninstall telnet server also has one step for copying that policy file. Um, let's add one more, do cfps add uninstall talk. and just press enter. So now we added that module. Um, we can build and deploy this. So do cfps build and cf remote deploy. It's telling you here, cf remote deploy. Hmm? A That's a chipmunk. That's a cf engine chipmunk. <laughs> so now uh, since I am using cf remote and I have this hub in my CF remote, it will deploy uh, directly to that host over SSH. As mentioned before, you can use Git as well, then you would do set up a remote and do Git push, but uh, we don't need to do that here. Um, you can SSH into that host, do just copy the, the string there and do SSH in front of it. Um, let's become sudo, sudo bash. Okay, um, then you can run the policy, cf agent dash k i. Mm -hmm. So our policy has already been run, it's not going to do anything exciting now. But let's install the talk package, so apt install talk. And then run the policy again. This is the hub in this case, so there is a bit of policy, but it removed the package talk because we, we have the policy from that module. Okay, let's look at the slides again to see what other demos we want to get to. So we did this. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
so the question for the recording was that uh, modules can um, put policy in this var CF engine master files directory, and they can also put uh, overwrite the policy that uh, that we ship by default. And um, this can be problematic, of course. Uh, it does mean if you are if you're using this as a way to patch those files, um, your your copy of it will get outdated if we if we change that file. So in general, it's maybe not something to recommend. Um, if the user had a, a specific re reason for doing it, then maybe that makes sense. Um, but we try to make the, the policy set uh, configurable with uh, JSON, um, so you shouldn't have to do that in most cases. Yeah. yeah if you did that That's a good feature idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we yeah we can um, build in some more warnings for if people try to uh, either maliciously or accidentally uh, overwrite files that maybe they're not supposed to. Yeah. I have the cheating slides again here in case the demo goes wrong. Uh, okay. Let's take a look at input. So as I mentioned earlier, yeah, go. You, we have modules that accept input. And that means that the user of the module can provide some parameters. Uh, go out from this hub, please. So you're in the hub now. Do control D, control D. So now we are back here in our project. So we're going to add this module called delete files. And uh, it says it accepts input. Uh, we're going to say yes, we want to supply that now. Otherwise, the command is cfbs input if you want to do it later. Um, okay, so now it's asking us for a file. Uh, let's do slash tmp slash virus or something. And then we usually add in ways to put comments on things. So here, this this seems malicious. If you have TMP slash virus, it's probably not a good thing. And then uh, it asks if you want to specify another file. So this will loop forever. We're just going to say no here. And then again, it's doing git commits for us. Um, and uh, yeah, we can build and deploy that. Let's go inside that machine and uh, we can be root again for this demo and uh, run the policy. Just like the last demo, it's not going to do anything now because probably I don't have a TMP slash virus file, uh, but we can touch that file. And then run the agent and then it deleted that file. So what happened there was our input. Let's take a look at the uh, editor again. So um, at the end here, it says this module accepts uh, input. So it has an input key, has a list of files. Each file has a string, that's the path, and a string about why. And then if we go to the delete files mod, uh, folder, input.json, and that's what we um, answered with, basically. So it's repeating the, um, the information about what this is. And then here's our response. Um, path temp virus, why seems malicious. 
So when we run the build, it will take this JSON and convert it to a JSON that ends up being variables um, that we access from the policy. So the delete files module has policy that looks for these, um, these variables here. So variables called files, namespace is delete files, bundle is delete files. So the variable, uh, the module will look for if that uh, exists and if it does, it will do some things. So in general, when you're writing modules like this, especially modules that accept input, um, the same thing is to make it so that it doesn't do anything by default. So just adding the module shouldn't usually make changes to the system in these cases because um, you want to specify input and then have it do things based on the input. And in the future, uh, this um, will become more important because we will uh, be adding support for specify specifying inputs for only some hosts. And so uh, then the default should be that it's not doing anything on other hosts, only on those hosts where you have uh, added something for it to do. Okay, go on. How are we doing on time? Under 15 minutes left, yeah. Okay, so um, a module can also be your policy. Um, and that's, um, that's the idea is that you will use this for, for our policy that's default for modules from other people and then on top your own policy. So let's write a simple policy file. What's your editor of choice? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was there from before. The. Um, the policy here is not that important. This is not a talk about how to write policy. Um, but yeah, this is a bundle that can print hello CF engine. Um, so yeah, let's add that one. You do CFPS add dot slash and my policy dot CF. Here's an interesting part. Um, it's asking which bundle should be evaluated. And it's actually parsed the policy and found that there is a bundle called foo. So let's choose that one. And then the commit message is fine. And now let's take a look at the JSON file. So uh, scroll to the bottom. So here is our policy file. And it has now added the necessary steps here for our uh, policy. So it has the bundle called foo and the file name over there. So that interactive prompt helped us to kind of generate the right JSON here. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's the first bundle in the file. Yeah. Yes, so the question what was what is the default uh, uh, choice for the bundle? And it's the top one, which like number one in the menu, which means the first one it found in that policy file. Uh, yeah, uh, you, can, you can build and deploy this as well. It's maybe not a very interesting demo, but. Okay, SSH into that machine, and then as root, run CF agent, yeah. And it prints hello CF engine. So again now, all of these modules that we've added, everything that we have in our project is a part of the policy set that is running on the hub. 
on the hub, it looks pretty similar to a policy set that you would have before um, with different CF Engine files. Okay. Yeah, we can look at the git commits. Yeah, sure. Uh, yes. Yeah, so uh, let's look at the def.json on the hub. We'll go to var cf engine master files. And then you can cat. Don't vim. <laughs> cat that file. Uh, def.json. Yeah. So this is what the def.json looks like now. Um, on the top there, you see that the auto run bundle has added a class called services auto run, so that enables the auto run functionality. Then, for uh, variables, we have added some bundles to uh, the bundle sequence, so that's what that bundles build step does. You see, we have uninstall talk, uh, delete files, delete files, and foo. So that's each of our module modules except for the one that is using auto run uh, has um, a bundle name there. Uh, then pretty much exactly the same for inputs. It is adding those CF files to inputs and this is um, all based on the cfps.json. Uh, you don't have to really hand write this. Um, but yeah, with the exception of that module using auto run, we could disable auto run here and everything would be uh, restricted to these uh, CF files. Yeah. So when you add that gets uh, appended to the bundle sequence, is there a way to say, I want that in a certain place, or is there a way to change it? Right, so the, um, the modules, they are added in order. You do CFPS add and it adds a module. Uh, and then within each module you have steps. And one of the steps is the bundles step, which is the thing that's manipulating the bundle sequence there. And so uh, one way that you could um, reorder this if you want things to happen uh, earlier is to just move the bundle up in the JSON, uh, the module up in the JSON file. And then the steps for that module will happen first. Um, the tooling does not allow you to reorder currently, but also the idea is that you are able to customize this JSON file with an editor. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's go to the end of the presentation now, I think. So I'll briefly mention, um, we took a look at the um, uninstall talk policy file. Uh, as I said earlier, you just need to write a policy file or a Python module and a readme. And then you need to add this kind of entry to the um, index JSON that we have in GitHub. That repo is called build-index. Uh, and that's that's it. Um, and then Nick is going to have a session about writing a module. So uh, that's him. He's sitting behind there. He might he might also mention org mode. He's known to do that. Uh, move on. And finally, I just wanted to mention kind of where this moves us in terms of contributing and sharing things. So before to uh, contribute to CF Engine you could contribute C code to the core agent or the binaries. You could contribute policy, but mainly to, to master files. And you could um, contribute to the documentation. Those, and the documentation is markdown and, and policy language as well. Of course, you can still do all of those things, but now there are new options. build.cfengine.com is an open source uh, website built uh, with uh, technologies there, Markdown, HTML, CSS, Hugo. The CFPS CLI that we demoed today is open source as well. Um, you can uh, extend that one with new functionality. And there's also now many more 
opportunities to put things in modules and share those on on our build.cfengine.com. Promise types, inventory, security hardening, input-based modules, compliance reports, all of these can be put on the on the website. Yeah. That's it.